I want to try that again. Hold on a second, because that was not adequate. Hold on a second. That's better. Sorry I played that twice. The reason was I wanted to show you what we drew last week, which was Yestertech. And uh, our crack production department, which is me, uh, accidentally played the uh, one from the week before, which was blindfolded selfies, which were also awesome. So anyway, for those of you who are new to Draw With Me, at the beginning of each show, we show all the drawings that people did for the subject from the week before, which this past week was Yestertech. All of the obsolete technology that we once thought was so cool and now is gathering dust in the garage. So um, I love to see those drawings. Uh, a lot of us drew the same kinds of things, but then there were also a lot of interesting memories that people dredged up. Like I liked seeing the original iMac Oh, I love that iMac. It was so beautiful. It looked like a giant piece of candy. Uh, all kinds of things that were in there. So that was really nice. Hey, I'm glad to see so many folks coming in to join me today. Today's going to be a really fun day. We're going to have a lot of, a lot of, uh, I think, interesting experimentation. Today I'm calling it Inky Dink. Inky Dink. Do you remember the song, Jimmy Durante? Inky Dink, a Dink, a Dink, a Dink, a Dink, a Dink. I sing almost as well as he did. Ink. Get every kind of ink thingamajink you have around the house. Pens, brushes, bottles, canisters, uh, I don't know, foot pumps. Whatever it is that you have ink in, get it. Because we're going to play around with lots of different kinds of ink and try it out. See how we feel about it. Uh, oh, that just reminds me of another ink I forgot to get together. So, yes. So let's just get lots of ink together. And um, we're going to try it out. We, I, I have a drawing subject in mind. We'll get to that in a second. Um, you know, some of you may say, I really enjoy Draw With Me, but I always forget that it's happening. Well, that's why you need to sign up for getting texts with me. Because if you do, then, um, you know, you will ideally be able to get texts from me. Um, which for some reason isn't happening. So so let me just find that number. Where is that number? Anyway, I'll post it later on. Um, or maybe somebody else can post it. So if you uh, if you post it, why doesn't that show up? It's just one of those things, you know? Ah, oh, here it is. Okay. There we go. Thank you for creeping in. So if you text this number, I will know about it. And I will be able to text you. And so all the folks who are getting these texts right now were alerted to the fact that we we're doing Draw With Me today. So that's one of the many services that my texting provides, is letting you know when Draw With Me happens, but also sending you various bits and bobs of inspiration. So, uh, you know, if I come across an artist that I like or an idea that I think is cool, or I do a drawing that I'd like to tell you, show you, um, I put it out there and share, I'll text it to you. So not that often, a couple times a week, won't be annoying. 
But um, if you're in the United States or in Canada, you can get it. Unfortunately, for the rest of the world, it doesn't work yet, but it will. It will eventually. So feel free to text with me. It's, and if you hate it, you can stop it. Nothing ventured, nothing lost. Um, what else? Yes. So I also wanted to tell you that I emailed to see that bit.ly slash Danny's essays dot no dots bit.ly Danny's essays. Every Friday I write an essay and I send it out about various things that I think are interesting to think about. And um, again, both free. Speaking of free, I want to tell you about what's happening tonight that I'm really excited about and that after what we go through today, you may be really even more interested in joining us. So tonight we have a Q&R live webinar, uh, which is our opportunity to ask the experts about a particular subject. So far, we've done one on paper. We did one on markers. And tonight we're going to do one on ink. Everything you could possibly wonder about ink. And it's free. It's free because it's brought to you by Pentel Arts. They are paying for all the expenses, such as they are. They're also providing some freebies. They're going to be giving out some free pens and brushes and stuff like that. So you definitely want to show up for that. Again, all you have to do is go to bit.ly slash inkydink and sign up for it. Reserve your space. There's a limit, but um, a bunch of people have signed up for it already. I think it's going to be really fun. So we have several experts. We have Chris Kaler, who's going to be teaching our next workshop on drawing with a brush. We have our own David Pyle, who is uh, an expert on kind of anything, everything. You know, I'll ask him, like, what should I eat for lunch? The guy knows everything about everything. So he's really great and a great explainer of stuff. Um, and we also have Belinda, who's coming to us from Pentel Arts, and she's going to be giving us some insights into, like, how do pens get made? What are they made of? I mean, there's so much stuff we take for granted for about ink. We've been drawing with ink for, our, you know, it's probably since we were pretty young. But what do we actually know about it? Like, what what is ink made of? How do you use different kinds of ink? Why is something good for this and good bad for that? What's the difference between drawing with a brush and drawing with a dip pen and drawing with a ballpoint pen and drawing with a gel pen and blah, 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 blah. Anything you can think of, you can ask. So you bring your questions, and for 90 minutes, the experts have at those questions. We also record it for those of you who for some reason can't show up. But if you don't show up, you're not getting freebies. But we will save a recording. So sign up and then you'll be alerted to when the recording is. So come on, join me. S. O'Neill from Phoenix, finally. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so this is going to be really great. And it's going to be tonight, 5 p.m., just a few hours away from here. Probably just as the leaf blower stops. Who knows? Maybe there'll be some... Yes, it's leaf blower time here. Oh, good. All right, so now that we've gotten all that out of the way, I want to talk to you about... Um, yes, as, as JJ says, if you don't sign up, you can't get the recording. So um, please do. Sign up. It costs, it, it's two clicks of a link. And then you're in, so just do it. It's going to be great. Um, yes, and we are almost out of space, as JJ also says. Let me just repeat what she says. Limited spaces, and we're nearing capacity. Just saying. You don't want to say, what the heck? Why did I wait? Now I know nothing about ink. This is your chance to know everything, and there will be a test. No, there won't. You can fill it out in pencil. No, you can't. Yes, David Pyle is in the audience. It's true. I think I'm thinking of replacing our theme music just with the sound effect of a leaf blower. What do you think? Could be nice. So, all right, cool. Are the freebies only available in the USA? Uh, yes, I think they are. I think because we honestly dealing with shipping things through customs and stuff like that is, is hard. And so I think Pentel Arts, generous as they are, may not be able to deal with that. But again, the information, however, is global. The facts about ink, no, no borders. So feel free to uh, come anyway. Okay. So what I was thinking about today was um, 
was to, um, was what would be appropriate to draw if we're going to draw with ink, right? So, so what could be better than a squid, right? So that's what we're going to draw today. We're going to draw a squid. But I want to take you through what that means because at first you might be saying, "Ugh, that sounds vile, awful," or "Hmm, big calamari fan." Maybe that's what I could t tackle. But I think this is going to be an interesting sort of creative exercise. And uh, let me just take you through. For some reason, my PDF is stuck on the last page. Um, but let's just go through some stuff. Okay, let me start at the beginning. Here we go. So this is your sort of generic squid, giant squid. That's kind of what I'm talking about. Giant squid, the kraken. Apparently, that's what it, that is. The kraken is the sea squid, the giant sea squid. And they've kind of found... They found them recently. I don't know how much you know about that. I don't know that much about it myself. But I do remember when like some I think Japanese oceanographers or something like that first filmed it and they kind of showed it coming by the camera. It was really fairly cool. So um, yeah, so squids. Like every so often you'll see one like washed up on the shore. I don't know. That doesn't look like a majestic beast. It looks like an appetizer. Um, or a bunch of old inner tubes or something. So we're not going to focus on the actual dead animal, but we're going to focus on the majestic, almost, um, I don't know, mythical beast. Look at that thing. Artists have, artists have often imagined how the squid can, well, rise from the depths and attack. I mean, look at that. Le poulpe colossal. I mean, that is great. And what's also great about it is look at it as an experience, as an ink experience. Can you see what I'm trying to get at here? There's just lots of opportunity for experimenting with ways of using line and tone in this subject. As there is in many subjects, but this one, you know, proof is in the pudding. You can do it. Dots, lines. Look at the body of that squid. It almost looks like bricks like a wall, brick wall. Pretty cool. Um, yeah. Joanne DeLego mentions, um, whoops, Octopus My Teacher, which is a little documentary on Netflix that will break your heart. It is, I mean, you will never think that you could fall in love with, is it a cephalopod? And that, but we're not talking octopuses. We're talking squids. Because octopi, I think, Actually, they do produce ink, don't they? But squids are definitely the ink guys. So check this out. Another fantasy of this giant critter coming out of the ocean and attacking ships. I don't know that it ever happened, but, you know, it's pretty kind of terrifying to think that it might. <coughs> so, yeah, there's a bunch of these kinds of uh, images of ships being attacked. I think that's probably a little bit much for a draw with me session, but you know, for those of you who are more ambitious, check it out. <clears throat> and then there's things like this. Um, the old human squid combination, better known as Squidward from um, SpongeBob. Octopuses do produce ink. Okay. Yes, anyway, we're not talking about octopuses today. We're talking about damn squids. Squids, because look at that. An octopus is not going to attack a whale. But that apparently is the thing of myth. Octopuses attacking whales. Sorry, I've got something caught in my throat. <coughs> okay. And look at this from the Museum of Natural History. What a gorgeous and terrifying image that is, right? I think it's an ink wash painting, perhaps. That's what it looks like to me also. So yeah, squids. Let's have a look at another image. Slightly less interesting, less dramatic. Looks almost like they're about to start dancing. But then this, I love this piece. Um, let's have a look at it close. And uh, I mean, this is a, to me a great example of ink. I mean, look at all these different forms of 
ink lines, ink textures, and just totally abstract. And look at the little fishes that are in there too. Zoom out again, and then zoom in to look at this thing. It's great. So yeah, so I've, I've pulled a couple of pieces. I mean, basically what I did is I went to Google Images and I typed in giant, giant squid. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so here's a squid and there's a squid, different kinds of squids. We'll, we'll talk about what we're gonna actually do in terms of reference, but you know, here's what I was thinking. Um, let me just close these down a couple of things. So yeah, so these are some squid bits, squid references. I just want to kind of choose what we're going to work from. You know, this one is pretty good. It's pretty dynamic. It's a little plasticky looking, but there's a lot of interesting kinds of shapes in these tentacles. So um, yeah, that will be pretty cool. That, that is a nice piece of reference. Maybe a bit complicated for the time that we have allotted because we have about you know, 20 minutes left to do this. This one, um, kind of dramatic coming at you. I'm not sure I like it. I think I'm going to get rid of that one right away. And then there's this one, which is, you know, this is, uh, looks more like a, a little painting. Um, and I think that I might use this one. I think, I think we're going to go to that and have that guy be our guy. So this will be our reference. You're welcome to use another kind of reference. Do they only have one eyeball? I don't, I don't, that would be really creepy if that was true. Or do they have an eyeball on the other side? I think they have one eye. I think they're, I think they're monocular. C.W. Chu seems to be a real expert on all things. And she says that they are bi binocular. So anyway, so Aaron brings up a good point. Noodler's Whaleman Sepia Ink. I like that. That would be great. But uh, I don't actually. Um, but yes, so let's take this guy. So here's another thing that I did today. I started gathering all my pens. I have an awful lot of, of pens, as, as, as I'm sure you do too. Um, and one of the things I did this morning was I went through and I just made myself a little... Let's get this damn squid down there. Made myself this little... Um, because I have, you know, I have lots of pens. So let me just take you quickly through them. So I have this uni pen, which is a really nice little pen. Um, and that's an 01. It's waterproof and fade proof. It's a good pen, uni, like uniball, uni, uni. Um, and then what else? This Pentel sign pen, really nice squishy nib. Really nice, I like it. Pentel happens to be made by our sponsor, but uh, I have a whole box of different colored ones. Ooh, that's still wet. Um, Shows you how fresh this experiment is. Um, and then, of course, microns. You know, I have lots of microns. 08, and I have 005, and I have, this is a 1, and I have an 05, and I have an 03, and I have an 02 somewhere, too. So those are definitely going to come into play. And then, uh, what else? I have these Windsor Newton pens um, that are really great. We got them when um, when we were working with Ian Fennelly. So these Windsor Newton, these are again fine liners. They have slightly longer nibs. They're really nice, and they are also waterproof and light proof and all those kinds of things. And um, I have an 03. I have a gray one over here, which is an 05, and I have an 08. I try to avoid grays today, but I do have a gray. Where's that other one here? I have a gray. This is a Pentel Arts brush pen which we'll be exploring in Chris Kaler's workshop. But I um, have that on standby. I might be using that. But I also have this one, which is black. This kind of um, Pentel pen, is, Pentel brush pen, is uh, not waterproof. So you can go over it with a brush of, with water, and you can dilute it and so forth. But then I have also, where is it? I have my special limited edition Pentel brush pen which I love and this one is um, this is all waterproof this is you know this is this is the one uh, this is another one of my long loves which are these Tombos and uh, these are Tombow Fudensuke manga pens that have really nice soft flexible 
nibs and they come in two different kinds, uh, hard and soft. Although there's very little difference I find between the two. And then this is another Pentel pen. It's called the Stilo. See that nib? Can you tell how unusual that is? It's sort of like, it's kind of flexible, but uh, it's also quite fine. You can get quite a range of line out of that. Um, and then, you know, a Stadler. I love these pigment liners. This is an 07, nice and fat. So yeah, so, and then of course, Le Dip. Not sure why I called it Le Dip. I was thinking of French Dip, maybe. Um, yeah, so this is a dip pen. I can't honestly remember what nib I have in here. I have lots of nibs. Uh, generally, I just kind of, I don't know. One day I'll talk about nibs, but not today. All right, so that's all we've got. Are you with me? Are you with me? Squid lovers. Let's get the squid big, big again. So let's see how much we can get done of him. Uh, I think I'm going to start with my brush pen because I'm thinking that I want to... Um, how can I set this up so that you can see it? I think I'm going to go high. And I'm going to move the squid up there. And I'm going to get these guys out of the way. Clear the deck for squid. I'm going to start with his body. nice about this pen is see, see how that line swoops and changes that's just so nice about this brush pen but angles a bit acute um, so yeah comes to a finer point than that but I, I'm taking my um, cue from that piece that I really quite liked, which was the, um, was it this one? Yes. No, not that one, but this one. Do you remember that? How kind of varied those lines were? That's, that's sort of my ambition is to do something that's has that kind of variety to it. So maybe that of interest to you as well. You decide. So, this, this is just sort of a place to start. It's kind of my idea about it. I've never drawn this before, for those of you who are wondering. I have no idea basically what I'm doing, but you know, welcome to draw with me. So yeah, and then let's see how this looks. This is sort of the head and uh, here's the eyeball. That is creepy. And now that Jen pointed out that there's only one of them, it's even creepier. And then let's think about... Um, That'll do. And then, sorry, it's taking every brain cell I have to, to do this. So I'm sorry, I'm not explaining what I'm doing in case it isn't obvious. You know, you feel like in, like this brush pen seems really perfect for this because of the um, kind of grace of these lines. Where does this one even come from? Okay, It's sort of like drawing shoelaces or something like that. You're not sure quite where they came from. You have to follow it back to its source of origin to figure out where does that come from. And... Uh,
I realize I've been holding my breath this entire time. Probably not a good idea. But it does make for cleaner lines. Not to... See, I'm smudging it, smearing it. Yes, permanent ink smears. That should be the price of entry for tonight's workshop is, uh, do you have ink stained fingers? I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these suckers yet. So I'm just kind of putting in a couple of them to remind me that they're there, but I don't necessarily want to um, commit yet to how I'm going to do that because who knows? Something else could come up. And uh, I don't even know where some of these tentacles came from. Like this one. It's kind of cool. But... Yeah, and then... I'm kind of a bit scared now to go... over here because in part because I'm really reaching across the drawing and so you see there's a difference I mean one thing when working with a brush pen and, and Chris is going to talk a lot about this in the workshop is where you rest your hand do you rest your hand like this you know your your wrist down and then an angle with your with your whole hand or do you I don't know if you can see this but do you you know, pivot with from your elbow, which can be pretty hard, or do you kind of rest all your knuckles down on the page? And if you do that, which I'm doing now, of course, you risk screwing everything up. So yeah, so we, you know, those are those are all uh, choices that and another thing that also is kind of possible that I'm not doing is to turn my page. So I could turn my page, and then I could get at those more easily, but it would it's not ideal for what we're doing right here on YouTube. So I'm going to just, I'm going to kind of deal with that part of him later on. Okay. So I'm gonna, let's just deal with this eye, the highlight. Okay. So I think we have like kind of at least this side of him worked out. Right. And I think there are probably other bits that I left out, but you know, you could also keep adding these and you could say, you know what, I'm not going to be um, encumbered by the reference. I, I want to make something that looks squid-like. So that's what that's, I mean, how you use reference images is a personal decision. My goal is never to reproduce the reference picture because what's the point of that? It already exists. That This seems silly. But sometimes you need it because you say, Honestly, I have no idea really what a squid looks like. Like, how many arms does it have? I don't, it seems like it just has kind of a, just a, like, like somebody just threw confetti out there. And that's how many arms it has. It just kind of, has, it's not like an octopus that has, seems to have serious arms. But then you look at it and you go, well, these arms are pretty serious. You know, maybe that, maybe that is something I need to know about. And that single eye business, I don't know. I might have thought, yeah, maybe that's true. But then again, you look at reference and you say, okay, now I use it for that. But then you also say, I, I'm here to create my version of this guy. So therefore, um, you know, I can make it up. So I think I'm going to start going in and now thinking about what do I want to do in terms of making, you know, and again, I'm not trying to do a perfect guy here. I'm not trying to make a perfect squid. I'm trying to make kind of a an inky squid, you know? So, so therefore, I'm going to see what I can do to just add some, you know, some fun to it. Let's get that to an appropriate angle. I mean, at this point, the reference kind of doesn't matter anymore. I'm just going to go to town, as it were, with my brushes and my pens. And uh, I don't know why I decided to do this, but I did. And this pen is okay, but I'm not really 
that excited about using it. So I think I'm going to try for some heavier lines by switching to an 08. Not doing it for me either. How about uh, this guy? This guy will do it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding some kind of little textures uh, in order to represent the kind of curve of his of his body here. The fact that he is three dimensional, but you know I could do cross hatching, but I like the idea of doing something that feels sort of suckery and uh, you know slightly see seafood like I was gonna say seafood that's not a very nice way to put it but yeah that is sort of what I'm thinking something that feels like something familiar right there's something familiar about scales and all the stuff that goes into making seafood seafood I have to say, after watching that, um, my teacher, the octopus movie, I have, n I have no interest in ever eating grilled octopus again. And I happen to really love eating grilled octopus, but no, never again. Because after you see that movie, it would be like eating, you know, a grilled small child. Not even a small child, actually, because in some ways, this, these octopuses seem more intelligent and human than we are more soulful. It's a beautiful movie. So the opportunity here with ink is to create lots of textures so that you are adding color. You're, so you're adding tone, right? By, by um, you know, making gradations that go from dark to light, but also adding color, as it were, um, with your line quality. So your line doesn't have to just be cross hatching, which which is you know cross hatching is fine, but it can be a little regular. But you might you might here want to suggest the movement of the squid by varying up your line quality, or you might want to just have fun as much as anything. You know, have fun by doing kind of almost doodly things. You know, so you could you could do little dots. You could do little. Uh, I was just doing little kind of S-shaped squiggles. You could do that. You could decide that you wanted to do squares. All right, so I could say, let me do some squares here. And I could do that. You know, again, thinking about that, that piece of reference I showed you before that has, somebody's mentioned Maori art. I don't know if that is Maori art. Maybe it is. Um, but the idea of, I mean, those kind of Maori patterns, you know, that you might see in like Maori tattoos or something. So you could really, you could do anything and you could do, um, you know, just anything that gives it a sense of, of energy in here, because there is a lot of energy in these tentacles. So this feels like a project that you could be working on for very long time if you wanted to you know you could just keep doodling your way through it so yeah so now because i want to i just want to try out different pens so i'm going to bring in my dip pen which is always an adventure because you never know what the dip pen is going to just go nuts and uh, but it might also cooperate today so let's see because it is it is a really great instrument but it also it seems to be a living thing a lot of the time. And sometimes it can just suddenly start bucking like a bronco, and then you're in trouble. Dip pen, like the brush pen, allows you to produce a really broad range of lines of thicknesses 
and there's an energy that is transmitted down your arm into the springiness of both of those things. So a brush pen is really springy and responsive. And in some ways it can be um, smoother, surprisingly smoother than a pen can be. So even like if you have something like a roller ball, which you think is just like kind of rolling along the uh, surface of the paper, you'd think that that would be pretty smooth, right? A well-oiled wheel compared to a hairy brush. But there's something about the way that the brush works and it seems to sort of like absorb any kind of tremor in your hand or um, any kind of variation in the stroke. It tends to even it out. So you can get much more smooth and sweeping lines. That's how I was able to get these lines. There's like no possibility of, um, you know, of having a jitter in it. But a lot of pens I find, I seem to have like, I have like a kind of a, you know, cracking. I have, I have a point in my wrist when I turn where it clicks like that. It goes ba-boom. And that can be so annoying when you're drawing a line and then suddenly boom, there it is. You bumped over that weird little thing in your in your body. Um, so the brush pen is can help to smooth those things out, and again create much more smoothness. So are you having fun doing this? This feels quite meditative. So I'm saying you could spend a lot of time doing this. It almost feels like the more work you put into it the richer this is going to look. I think you could come back to this for days and just keep working on it while you're watching TV or something. You know. I think you could also probably be a lot more um, methodical than I am and more thought out. So you could really, you could create um, almost like a, a palette of brush and pen textures and patterns so you could say okay like right now i'm doing little circles but then i could also vary that and i could say okay now i'm going to do little triangles and i'm going to do that and there are little interlocking triangles they're subtle they're small you may not even notice that there's a difference but it just makes feels makes things feel more energetic and then these little suckers that i drew before and I said I wanted to wait and see what I was going to do with them. It's true, because I think that it's kind of nice to have a little bit of shading underneath the suckers, maybe even some dots inside the suckers. So, but you didn't think we'd be sitting around talking about suckers today, did you, suckers? <laughs> but we are. Where am I on this thing? Because I want to go back and look at the reference again. Yeah, because this arm of all these suckers is quite nice. In the reference, because of the red of the squid versus the yellow of the suckers, they stand out a bit more than mine. But, you know, you could theoretically make some of the arms black and make the suckers stand out in white if you wanted to. That would be a you know, creative choice that you could make. I do like the sound. I know that not everybody does. Some people say this sounds like nails on a chalkboard. To me, it sounds like art. You could also do, you can do lines like this that are very regular, but then you could also say, I want every fifth one to be a double line. So I'm getting kind of a banding effect, you know, um, almost like some kind of like a coral snake or something. You could do it that way. Lots of different ways to go. Okay, let's stand back and have a look at this. You know, you could also decide that you don't want to do every inch of this beast. You know? I mean, looking at it now, like, uh, I was going to say it looks a little finished, but it doesn't. Actually, this whole part needs a lot of work. I have to work on that whole part there. Um, but for now, in terms of my explanation about how to do this, 
I think this is a lot of fun. I think there's other pens in here that I want to try out. I want to get into. And uh, I want to experiment with other kinds of textures and stuff like that. So, um, yes. So, Phyllis, I would never think of drawing a squid, she says. It's true. I don't know that I would have ever thought of one until when I, this week when I did think of one. But yeah, it's, it's not an obvious subject, but it is pretty cool. And it has, I mean, the, drawing those lines, sweeping lines was really, really fun. Um, so yes. <sighs> um, I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep working in the, uh, the Spark After Party, which happens in 15 minutes. We will continue working on this and we can talk some more about it. Um, and I'll come back and show you, well, I'll post this on social media and so forth. And if you'd like to do that, I would love to see what you do. So please do share it on Facebook, on Instagram, and put hashtag SBS draw with me on your drawing so we can find it or post it in the schoolyard. If you have ever taken anything with Sketchbooks School, any workshop, any class, you are a member of the schoolyard and you can share it there. You can see what other people did. You can talk about it. Um, you know, that's part of the fun. And um, otherwise, I hope to see you this evening. As you play with your ink, jot down some questions so that when you come to the workshop tonight, you can say, you know what, I'm going to finally find out what the deal is with this thing. Um, you're going to learn everything from the chemistry of ink, the different kinds of things that go into making it, the different types of ink there are. So you'll be much smarter about buying ink, pens, any of that kind of anything in an art supply store, you'll have, you know, knowledge so that when you go and you look at, you know, when you're looking at the side of a pen, you're like, I don't really understand, like, what's the difference between permanent and archival? What's the difference between waterproof and water resistant? All those kinds of questions, you'll go, I know what they are, you'll impress your friends when you can see them again. And when you go get to go back to art supply stores, which is going to be soon, right? Any day, week, month from now, we'll all be flooding back into Blick and wherever your local art store is and just standing in mute adoration in front of the racks of pens and sketchbooks and just going, like a, star like a starving man stumbling out of the desert. Finally, you can just, you know, wander for hours and fill up shopping carts with art supplies. But at least now you'll know what you're doing and you'll know what you're buying so that when you get it home, you'll know how to use it, which is a step forward, I think, for a lot of us. So, all right. Well, thanks very much. And thanks for joining me today. I'll see you tonight. And I'll see you, of course, next Thursday uh, at uh, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, 10 here in Phoenix. Um, and we will do some more drawing of something else. I don't know what it'll be. Thank you for doing this. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.